Hi and welcome to this week's Wu Wai Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week we are talking all about emotional triggers. Now, do you get triggered easily by other people or situations in your life? Maybe one minute you're okay, you're experiencing inner peace, calm and flow, but then something happens or someone says something to you and you become a victim to overwhelming emotions such as anger, frustration, fear or sadness. Well, in this teaching, you'll learn how to identify, decode and manage your emotional triggers and the unwanted feelings they create. We'll also share the steps you can take to do the deeper work that will stop your emotional triggers once and for all so you can finally retake control of your mindset and emotions. Okay, David, so let's begin with the basics. What are emotional triggers? Well, I class them as inner child victim statements because just the, just the phrase, I am triggered, I get triggered, what that's doing is putting the power onto someone else and making you the victim. And so this definitely, this will be dealing with the inner child, this will be dealing with the golden thread process. So if you're interested in those two techniques, I'm pretty sure we'll be doing it, answering this question. But if you say, I am always triggered, I get triggered by this, I get triggered by that, what you're doing is you are making yourself the victim. As you actually said in your opening statement, if you are a victim to your emotions, but how can you be victim to emotions that only you create? It's nonsensical. You are creating the emotion. How can you then become a victim of those emotions? Well, there's two things there, David. You said it's a kind of an inner child statement. So when you say the inner child, you're talking about that part of our mind. Sometimes some people refer to it as the ego, but it's a statement that a part of our mind is making. But behind that statement, though, there are, there is a reality that we are experiencing overwhelming, uncomfortable, painful emotions. Yes, but the reality or the story is the inner child story. The reality is through that inner child's vision, the filter. So you're right, we class it as the inner child. You may prefer ego or emotional mind or subconscious mind, but it's a part of your mind that's deep in your mind that developed and got stuck between the ages of six years old and nine years old. I keep on repeating those ages because that age group, not exactly, but that age group seems very important for me in your emotional development. And there's a part of your mind that's almost like a kernel in the middle of a nut that's stuck tight and holding on to these childlike perceptions and views of the world. And then you're right, Alex, in that view of the world, then it seems as though everything's attacking you. You are the victim. The world's against you, and you are con constantly at the beck and call, almost like a puppet on the string to other people's whim whims and fancies. Because for many of us, whether it's us or our inner child, there is a strong belief that you said, well, we're creating the emotions, but most people would say, that person triggered me, exactly. or this situation really triggered me, or this type of person, or when someone says this type of thing to me, it triggers me. So we are kind of allocating the blame or the trigger to the other person or the other situation. But I would say an even stronger word, you're giving your power to the other person. You're saying that they are more powerful than me and I am the victim to what they may say, do or think, or even more complicated, what I think they're thinking. So what you're doing is hierarchically putting them far more important than you, and you're like the puppet, as I've just said, dancing around to how they pull the strings. Uh, but then, overtly, you try and control them or try and control situations so they don't affect you, instead of just controlling yourself. 
instead of taking absolute full accountability of your emotional feelings and experiences, they're yours, created by you. And as I repeat on many of my videos, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but so many of my clients, they watch the videos, they come on and they'll say a statement like, intellectually, David, maturely, David, I accept that I create my emotions. Of course I do. They don't float around the room and attack me. But, and it's the but, the part of the mind does not accept that. And as you say, in that reality, in that inner child reality, they are constantly being attacked and triggered. And I like the term trigger because it's like there's a trigger inside of them, but they haven't got the finger on the trigger. Someone else has. And that cannot be true. That is impossible. No one can have their finger on your trigger. So let me make this clear. It's your trigger, your finger. <laughs> you choose to pull it. It's a choice. It's yours. Okay, so if we try and break this down a little bit, no matter what happens around us, no matter what someone does or someone says to us, we can't change that or we shouldn't try to change that because we can't control other people or the external yeah. world. All we can do is control ourselves. Exactly. So, so can I just clarify yeah. that because that's very important because a lot of my clients now will then swing to the opposite and I, are you doing this and saying, oh, are you saying I should never be angry? doesn't matter if anybody walks over me. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying emotions are natural, normal. And there are cases where you should blow your top. There are cases where you should explode. There are also cases where you are very calm, even though the other person is shouting and screaming. What I am saying, Alex, is you are responsible for that emotional response. Yeah. And you should respond... And here comes a wonderful Taoist translation. Appropriately, your emotional response should be appropriate, that represents you, that reflects your true nature, that reflects who you are, that absolutely defines your authenticity. Do not give that power to other people. Yeah, okay, and that's a big, big, big. difference because. I guess people would quite rightly say, well, you're saying don't have any emotional reaction to no matter if someone says something awful, someone does something awful, if there's a if there's a huge injustice, if there's a really horrendous situation you're presented with, you're saying it's perfectly natural for you to experience a surge of emotions. Absolutely red light emotions as we call them so it could be anger it could be frustration Absolutely. it could be sadness it could be fear and yeah. that would be appropriate Absolutely. but what you're saying is acknowledge that you are creating those emotions and that sometimes it's appropriate but if you're constantly creating them it's almost like a light switch flicking on and off 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 on that is not appropriate and that's not healthy. But it's even more important than what you just said. Let's just use one of the things you said, fear, which is being scared, being fearful. So if you do not understand that you create fear, so an incident happens, I call it ABC in my model, A, an event or a situation. And as Alex says, those events or situations are mostly out of our control. Somebody does or says something, A. B, what you think and what you believe and interpret, A. So A is the event or the situation. B is what you believe or what you think. C is your emotional reaction or feelings. A, B, C. Event, beliefs and thinkings, emotions and feelings. Now, what you said is a, what happens a lot of the times. Something happens, immediately they go to see feelings, and then they react on their feelings. So they're not reacting to the situation, they are reacting oh, okay. to the feelings mm -hmm. that they've created. So instead of dealing with the situation that needs dealing with, they are now victim to their own emotions. So instead of going A, B, C, 
situation, belief, emotion, they go A, C, B. Event, emotion, belief. So they get the cart in front of the horse. So they make the situation a very bad situation, yeah. much worse. So by skipping out the, I guess, the rationalization, yes. the thought processes, running this through my kind of logical, analytical mind, exactly. my beliefs, by skipping that step out and just reacting emotionally immediately, it's almost like the emotions will inevitably amplify the situation or the event, the A. And then, as you say, we then go back to step B, the thoughts, the belief, the analysis. And we we are then dealing with the amplification of the problem or the what's being said. But you're not dealing with the problem. It's and we're not. We're that, dealing with the, the emotion. emotion. It, it's almost like the emotional reaction, exactly. which is inevitably going to be amplified because we are now definitely on high alert. So I was giving this teaching yesterday to an American client and he said something to me which I hadn't heard. He said, have you heard this? He said, imagine you're standing there and a man on a horse comes full gallop right past you and you shout at him, hey, where are you off to? And the guy says, don't ask me, ask the horse. Mm -hmm. And that's like the emotions. Yeah. If you just rough follow the emotions, yeah. you're out of control. You're following it in the galloping horse. <laughs> you're galloping the horse, Not... he's leading you. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really yeah, good, yeah, yeah. I've never heard that before. But you're, you're then creating the emotion you're not taking responsibility for creating the emotion, but then you are being driven or drawn or led by your emotions. And this is why it's so confusing. So it's A, the event or the situation. B, what you think and what you believe about that event or situation. C, your emotional reaction. That C is always after the thoughts and beliefs. And for many of my clients, they go A, C, emotions, B beliefs and then the situation is magnified is doubled up because now they've not only got to deal with the emotion they also have to deal with these galloping horse sorry they don't have to deal sorry I, they don't just dealing with the event they're also dealing with a galloping horse emotion yeah. so they're dealing with two problems now instead of one would you say that for a lot of people well in some situations and with some people that again it may be natural to have a very quick almost like a default emotional reaction but that it's at the point that we then go to the analysis the thoughts the beliefs and the kind of checking those emotions that we can um deal with those emotions and stop them spiraling out of control yes. i would agree with you alex a lot of my clients always say words that you just said oh it's natural oh it's the way i am Oh, it's, it's like I'm programmed. Oh, it's, um, it's habitual. And what they're doing is they're just accepting this misalignment because they have been doing it all of their lives. But this is why the Wu Wei wisdom is trying to teach you. It cannot be that your emotions just create themselves. Your emotions are created by what you think and by what you believe. That is what's releasing endorphins and other chemicals into your bloodstream, which creates the emotion. So you always have to go to the belief. And what we try and show you in the Wu Wei wisdom model is that process, A, B, the beliefs, the thinking is so important. And you have to take accountability and be self-responsible. We can't always change A, what's happening in the outside world. We can't change as somebody, say, criticizes us. They may criticize us unjustly, unfairly. They may be judgmental. We can't change them, but we can change our reaction to them. So A is them, say, criticizing you. A. B is what you believe and what you think about this person criticizing you. C is the emotion you then create. A, B, C. When you presented that situation where you say it's almost like we skip out B and we go directly to C, go directly to the emotional reaction. Yes. Would you say though that actually we are, it is that emotional reaction is always running through our belief system. It's just, it does, it happens so quickly. It's like a blink of an eye. 
I mean, even if we respond, so a lot of people would say, well, an, a fear response is, um, it's almost like hardwired into us in certain situations. Yes. But I wonder whether a fear response still is in response to a belief. So for example, if I see someone about to ha have a major accident, I don't kind of stand, stand there and, and ponder it and think it through. And I have a quick, immediate emotional reaction, but that emotional reaction is informed because I'm thinking that person's going to get hurt. I've got to jump in. So there is, there's a very, it's like a blink of an eye. It's less than a blink of an yeah. eye, Alex. It's less than a blink of an eye. And so what a client would normally say to me when they're, when they're disagreeing with me, they say, oh, well, are you saying if I was walking down the street and a, a, a tiger or a lion came towards me, I should not be scared? I'm saying, no, I think you should be scared. I certainly would be scared and I'd run or hide. But imagine you were a lion tamer. Or imagine that lion was something you'd live with as all of your life. Your belief would be yeah, different yeah. and then your reaction would be different. And the client said, well, how about if somebody pointed a gun at you? And I said, well, personally, I'd, I'd be <laughs> terrified. But perhaps if I was trained as a firearms officer or I was a soldier or I was somehow trained in dealing with um, aggression, I would deal with it differently because I've restructured my belief system. So really we're talking about appropriateness here again. Exactly. And, and, and also we're trying to offer you to look at your emotions in a completely different light. Instead of being something to be negative and to be avoided and something that you see as almost like uh, something that's against you, I believe your emotional feelings are your best friend. And I know some of you will look and go, this guy has gone crazy. How can you think fear is my best friend? But fear appropriately is telling you there's something here you need to deal with. So the red light feeling, that's what I prefer to call a red light feeling and a green light feeling. In the case that we normally talk about in this situation, we're not talking about lions and gangsters and, and terrorists. We're talking about our normal yeah. life when we say, I'm scared, I'm frightened, I'm frightened of what they think about me. That's what we normally talk about. That red light feeling is telling you quite clearly there's something in your belief system that you will need your attention immediately. It's very important. So if we get triggered, if you want to call it, if we experience an extreme red light emotion, such as yeah. fear. If we pull the trigger. Yeah, if we, pull, if we internally experience that emotion that we are creating, you're saying use that as a positive yes. signpost to say what's going on yes. here. Is this something that I actually should be very wary of, like an actual dangerous situation or a situation where I'm going to be harmed or someone I know is going to be harmed? Or am I experiencing this same emotion because of something I am misunderstanding, that's something right. that's misaligned with, within my thought processes? And we need to become more discerning because we, I guess we, for a lot of people, they live their lives in constant fear or constant anger or constant frustration or constant sadness in a way that is actually not appropriate to what's going on around them. That's right. We're not talking about the extreme sit sit situations. We are talking about your normal everyday life, your emotional life, as I, as I would call it. So if you're constantly pulling the trigger and experiencing very intense and powerful red light feelings, whatever you want to call them, fear, scared, jealousy, anger, frustration, sadness, abandonment, rejection. It doesn't matter. All those words to me mean a red light feeling. This now gives you the opportunity to do what we call the golden thread. The golden thread is like a reverse engineering. So if you listen to the teaching and consider this teaching for a moment, e even if you get a resistance, just consider it. You are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim. So that's every emotion that you experience, you have created it because of, of a, an event or a situation, because of A, because of what's happening outside of you. Then if you say, I'm going to use um, being criticized, 
When my boss criticizes me, oh my goodness, there is like an eruption. It's like a tsunami inside of me of emotion, sweaty palms, pulsating heart, weight, legs go weak, sweat. I can't stand it. Just the thought that he's going to criticize me. Now we know now there is something in your belief system, B, that needs to be addressed. So you start from the red light feeling and you ask yourself the self-inquiry you call it I call it the why question why okay why why have I just created that enormous intense red light feeling what is now you see what that first question is so important because it now separates the emotion the result C and we're going down and we're trying to find B what is the thought and the belief so when you ask why, so why, when that person criticizes me, do I create this very strong reaction? So we already know that I'm experiencing this strong physiological reaction, fear, not because I'm actually in danger, exactly. not because someone's actually physically threatening not me. Not because of the lion walking Yeah, exactly. You. So there is something going on here. And if I don't begin to address it in the way you're talking about, I'm constantly experiencing creating these triggers of fear within me. Every exactly. time my boss looks at me the wrong way or I or someone says something to me at work, I'm in this constant uh, red light zone. Right? Exactly. Lifting his eyebrows yeah. pulls the trigger. Oh, he just looks at me and he pulls my trigger. This is what clients say to me. He just looks at me strange and he pulls my trigger. He triggers me. They'll say that. He triggers me. He triggers me. I can't do anything about it. That's why I call it an inner child victim statement. Because what you're saying is, just the look of this guy. Pull me, David. Pull me. Come and save me. Come and tell me. Come and change him. You see, trying to put it onto him where it's down to you. You have the power. Mm -hmm. I already believe you're awesome. And then they'll give me a one of the three lies. I can't do it because I'm not good enough. Well, he's spotted I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I can't cope with him. It's too powerful for me. Oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I have no value. Oh, he doesn't think I'm good enough. And so you see, it, it's always this victim mode. And when we, when we experience those overwhelming emotions, it means that even, for example, if the boss is being inappropriate, is managing us poorly. We become so consumed by our emotions and trying to stop feeling so bad, we are lose our ability to stand up for ourselves, to put in place boundaries, to speak our minds authentically. Yeah. So it's almost like we disable all the qualities of ourselves that should be strong, self-assured, calm, imbalanced, considered in our responses. And we become like a hot mess, basically. But this, this is what upsets me, and this is why I do this work, because then I work with fantastically talented, sensitive, artistic, creative people who have lost all their power and all of their life. They've given their power to other people, to family, to parents, to partners, to bosses, and they're like a kind of a feather on a pond being blown about mm -hmm. by any current or wind that comes their way. And all of their talent is eating away at them inside. Mm -hmm. And this is a tragedy to, for me. And this is why I want to do this work, to show you and to tell you, I truly believe you're awesome. I truly believe this is just a technique that you have to learn. I understand fully it's not easy because you've been doing it from a child. But don't use those words like, oh, it's ingrained. Oh, it's a habit. Oh, I got, don't know why I do it. Oh, I can't help it. Because all of those, you see, are equally victim statements. Because as you say also, before we dig down into the golden thread process on this, the, po the point you're making is if we don't address this, then in response to the initial emotional trigger, we then become we amplify the problem because we become more needy, we become a people pleaser, we withdraw, we become angry, we, we don't, we act inappropriately, we shut ourselves away, we, we, we act in a way that 
I guess, amplifies the problem. We're trying to avoid the emotions, but we're not dealing with the situation head on. And the sad thing about this as well, you're absolutely right, Alex, and the sad thing about this, it doesn't get better as you get older. It actually gets worse because you have your intellect, your maturity, your knowledge growing and growing, and then you have this other part of your mind that I like to call the inner child, almost having this internal battle because, as you said at the beginning, the inner child is viewing the boss through a totally different reality. So the inner child has probably made the boss as some kind of a super figure, an authority figure. And for some of my clients, things like bosses replace their parents. Yeah. And so the inner child is seeing the boss as almost like their parents. So if the boss just breathes heavy, the child's on tender hooks right away. And then for my clients, in that moment, the mature, intelligent, creative, calm person is not in control. They have a little eight-year-old at the hand of their steering wheel of life, driving their life. And through the reality of that lens, now they're in problems. They're going to be chastised. They're going to be shown up. They're going to be embarrassed. They're going to be shouted at. See, so the child sees it in that way. That's why I really like the analogy, the metaphor of the inner child. It helps you to clarify it as in, as in your mind, and then we can help that part of your mind that I'm calling the inner child. So if we perceive someone has criticised us or does actually criticise us, actually criticize so us. this could be our boss, this could be our partner, partner. this could be a family member, this Next could be a valued friend, mm -hmm. someone who we hold in high regard mm -hmm. in some way. Or not. Or not, or not. Or not. It doesn't have to be okay. anybody we hold in high regard. And we experience this rush of red light emotions. So it could be anger, it could be fear, it could be sadness. Any mix of mixture of unwanted emotions. Yes. The first step is to say... Identify the feeling. Okay, I've got Ag the feeling. Acknowledge the feeling. The feeling is real. Yeah. I am creating this feeling. Okay, I'm creating this feeling. So that's very important. So do not think I'm saying ignore the feeling, avoid the feeling. I'm saying the opposite. Acknowledge the feeling. You can use any word you want to. I would not give it a word like anxiety, depression, and anything like that. I would just say, I am now experiencing an intense red light feeling. That's acknowledged. I understand. Now we don't need to talk about the feeling anymore. Now we need to go down the reverse engineering so you can ask yourself, why have I chosen to create that red light feeling? Okay, so why have I chosen to create this red light feeling? Mm -hmm. Well, the first check is, am I actually in danger here? Yes. No. Yes, and we're saying in, the ex in, in what we're yeah. talking, it's just an emotional feeling. Okay, so this has got something to do with what I'm thinking yes. or what I'm believing about this situation. Right. I'm experiencing these red light feelings because I believe, let's just talk, just talk about my, the boss scenario, that my boss does not think I'm good enough for this job and I'm, I'm, I'm letting him down or I'm letting her down. Okay. And why do you think the boss thinks you're not good enough for the job? because of the way that they seem to talk to me differently from other colleagues. Uh, or I've noticed that they are more critical of me and it's creating red light emotions within me. Okay, and why do you believe that they're more critical to you? What's the evidence, do you mean? Yeah, so okay. why? So you've told me that your boss, from what you observe, picks on you and yeah. is more critical of you. Why do you believe he's more critical than you? Because, um, because well, they were dismissive of me. When I, when I suggested something, the boss kind of dismissed my idea. And why um, can't he dismiss your idea? Um... Because I thought it was a good idea and, 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 and because they are more experienced than me, 
then I'm and they're dismissing it, then that means I'm not I'm not good enough or they think it, I'm not good enough, so I must be not good enough. It doesn't mean that. It just means that the idea that you've given him, he doesn't want to run with it. Why can't why does he have to run with your idea? But my inner child is saying, Yeah, but that's not the only thing. There's lots of things. I've been noticing lots of things and I've been getting triggered all the time because of being in this work environment. But why are you pulling the triggers of, of the emotion? Because I'm worried about losing my job. So why why would do you think that you would lose your job? Because my boss, because I think my boss thinks I'm not good enough, yeah. and I'm going round. It's like I'm going round in circles, okay. making myself more and more do you, do anxious you, about this. Do you believe you can do this job? Well, I did, but now I have self-doubt. So what are you doubting? I'm doubting my ability to do the job well and to cope. So what, so what are you basing your ability on now? Well, I'm only basing my ability on my perception of my boss not liking me. So you're basing your ability to do this job on your perception of what you perceive your boss thinks about you? Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of presupposition there, and it's all not necessarily much evidence. So, so you, so you tell me the latest word mm -hmm. on this is called confirmation bias. Yeah. I call it self-fulfilling prophecy. You see, so you've already painted a picture. The boss doesn't like me. He doesn't think I'm good enough. He does not going to rate me. Now you're running, you're running the gauntlet. Now he's going to sack me. I'm never going to get another job again. It's because I'm now good at it, and you've created. You, you yeah. used a great word at the beginning, Alex. Your inner child now has created a completely fictional reality mm -hmm. that oh. doesn't exist. But you've created, and now what you do in that story, see, I, I think about when, when I'm working with, with my clients, the inner child I, creates a story. Mm -hmm. You just demonstrated that. We don't try to do it quickly. It would normally take about 10 minutes to kind of flesh that story out that we did in two or three minutes. And Alex is role playing, so it's difficult for her. But you can imagine if that was you and you were in that situation, these would be real. So we flesh out this story. And what, what I often think about it, the story is like a balloon filled with hot air. And what keeps this story together? What is the material of the balloon is your emotions. And so this story that Alex has just painted out where the boss thinks you're no good, he's waiting to sack you, he only picks on you, you now think you're no good because you think the boss thinks you're no good. See, the story gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And what you're actually doing is making your illusional story into a reality. And in your mind, as you say, for the child now, this becomes in a reality. So now... She's painting a picture that she's going to get, get sacked. I've even had clients who've pictured themselves sitting in gutters with a begging bowl. They've got no money. They've been kicked. I know you're going to laugh, but this, these intelligent people have actually... But your inner child projects ahead to the worst case scenario. projecting on the worst case scenario and then creates the red light feelings. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy we call the carousel of despair. You're on the carousel going round and around and around. And then people will say crazy words to me, you know. I've said it many times. I say, why do you do this? And they'll say things like, well, it's easier. This can't be easier. This is a nonsense. This is an illusion. It is familiar. That's the correct word. You're very used to creating these worst case scenarios. You may have a bad boss. You may have a boss that doesn't respect your work. You may have to leave this job. The way out of this is perhaps now start looking for other positions yeah. that do respect you better. Because, David, I was going to ask you, in the scenario I gave you, a lot of it was a kind of figment of my imagination. But mm -hmm. let's say there was a re some reality in it, what, some yeah. truth in it. So the boss was a bad boss. Yes. Or I, there were failings in my work. Yes. Even with that, even with those truths in place, there's no benefit in constantly 
living in a state of red light emotions about this situation. But go back, that's not helpful. But go back to the ABC. Yeah. Let's say A, let's use your first one. I have a bad boss. Yeah. That's the situation. Yeah. B, what do you think and what do you believe you should do if okay. you're... Okay, so the way not to think is the way my inner child gives me, which is my boss is criticizing me. It's my fault. Yes. It's not because he's a bad boss or she's a bad boss. I blame myself, and then, then I get see. myself, and then I create a emotional response to that thought, which is fear, anxiety, self doubt, self loathing, exactly. Poor, poor so do, confidence. So do the ABC again. So the other other way. A, we have a bad boss. My boss is criticizing mm -hmm. me. The thought is. This is not my fault. This is because I've watched my boss and really he or she is not a good manager. They've got an issue, you know, or they've had a bad day or they've got family problems. Or it might be they're criticizing me. The way they criticize me is inappropriate, but actually I can see there is something I need to change in how I'm working here. There is a more measured, more balanced, more woo way way of thinking this through and then the emotional reaction is different calmer more peaceful so there's a, no B, red light C. emotions i'm not i'm not whistling a happy tune i'm not like bl bl blissful in joy or love because of this situation but i'm not experiencing anxiety fear self-doubt i'm thinking how can i proactively deal with this exactly. how can i proactively deal with the fact i've got uh, an inappropriate manager how can i proactively change the way i work here exactly so you go back to a and let's say again for this example you have a bad manager now that is an event or a situation you've got to now deal with i'm sorry you've got a bad manager i wish you hadn't had a bad i wish i had a lovely manager but you haven't you've got a bad manager We've got to deal with that situation. You can deal with it in many ways, and we could discuss the ways you could deal with it, be more assertive, be calmer, don't take his criticism to heart, blah, 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 blah. Or you could leave. There's lots of ways, thousands of ways. But the way that you were doing it on your role play, you went A, bad manager. B, sorry, A, bad manager. You went right to C, I self-doubt, and then be, then then your beliefs are a reaction to your self-doubt. Yeah, yeah, it's because I'm not good enough. Exactly. I always I'm always failing. Exactly. Then I'm looking for more exactly. failure. Then I'm looking for more criticism. Exactly. I'm looking for the evidence. Exactly. And that's why that A B C can be so powerful. A the event, B the beliefs, C is the emotional reaction. And this situation, this workplace situation, you could transpose this on. Anyway. Um, criticism uh, or be, someone being judgmental on you in a family situation, your partner, romantic situation, it's still the same. Uh, we're still talking about potentially the same emotional triggers that we've got control of. Yes. We're still talking about the same process of examining with our thoughts and our beliefs before we inflate and inflame the emotions. So the life lesson here, Alex, is if you are comfortable with the word trigger. I personally am not, because I am triggered makes you a victim. I don't believe you're a victim. But if you're comfortable with the word triggered, then I want to tell you that you are the only one with your finger on your trigger. And that's the life lesson. It's your finger on your trigger. You can pull it or you don't have to pull it. These are your choices. And what we're trying to do is to clarify your thoughts and your beliefs so you're doing it with a full intention, so you're being authentic, so you're being truthful, so you're operating from your integrity, so you're operating from that deeper part of you that I call Shen, that true part of you. You don't go that Alex did that wonderful role play on where you can see you're going round and around and getting deeper and deeper and more confused. For a lot of my clients, when I first talk to them, first one, maybe two sessions, it's like you're talking to somebody that's been sucked down in quicksand. Yeah. And the more they fight, the sun comes up to them. And this is all in their illusional mind. This is the reality. They see it as a reality, but it's just a figment of the inner child's imagination. And what about situations where people say, 
I just can't help. I'm, I'm just getting so angry with what's going on in the world. I'm just getting so angry with the way people are uh, saying these things or believing these systems and it's so inappropriate but basically like it's almost like we can't pinpoint one person saying one thing because it's just i'm constantly getting triggered by what i re hear in the news or is so, it the same principle so exactly, it's exactly the same a the things you read and see in the news there Which is actually definitely happening. they're actually happening right? we we're not saying they don't happen there's unfairness injustice things which shouldn't happen they do happen b what do you believe and think about that. Well, I believe it's wrong. Okay. And it that belief it, it's wrong that there's okay. injustice, unfairness. Okay. That belief then creates red light emotions okay. within me. So now you can now carry on creating red light emotions every time you, I watch the news. Exactly. That's your that's your so what's that's your the choice. solution? So your so my solution would be we have to accept. Here comes the Taoist teaching. We have to accept that the world people, the universe, does not run to the way, to the model that we see it. Now, how do we deal with that? How do we deal, do we live in a world with people, countries, events that don't always do what we believe is right to do? How, why are you sitting in so much judgment that you believe that everybody has to act to what you believe is right? And so there has to be some kind of flexibility or movement in that rigid belief system of black, white, yes, no, right, wrong, just and in, and in, and in just. Because if not, you're doing exactly the same as the people you're criticizing. You're sitting in judgment. You're being black, white. You're you're casting your assertions onto onto other peoples. We live in the world that we live in, and we have to accept this world that we live in, and we have to find the way that reflects who we are. So instead of trying to change the world, I would, if you came to me with that problem, I would say, why can't you impose your beliefs? Why don't you start to do something? Why don't you start, I don't know, a political party or join a party that's similar to you, or why don't you start your own blog or your own YouTube channel or do something that starts to portray what you believe is the right way to do it. Don't just sit there and criticize, yeah. you know, shooting the ducks, because you have to be proactive and do something rather than reacted and creating all these emotions of fear and anger and resentment and eating yourself up because for one thing for certain that's not going to change a that's not going to change the universe i believe you can change the universe i believe it is possible if you strongly believe that that you can stick your head above the parapet and start saying what you believe then if you're right People will listen to you. So would you say like a small measure of emotions, red light emotions, say anger or frustration, can be used as a good motivator? Absolutely. But if you're constantly being triggered, if every time you listen to the news, every time you read something, every time someone tells you something, you, it inflames you to the point that you you you're you're getting ill. That is not good. That is not healthy. It kind of goes round as in a circle, and it brings us back to where we started, Alex. To the saying that I try and say. I know I repeat myself. I know you must be getting fed up of hearing this, but you are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim. So if you want to create a red light emotion about the state of the world, if you want to talk about that. That's your choice. Please do it and then do something about it. But don't be the victim of that yeah, emotion. That's, the big, that's difference. The, big difference. the big difference. Don't sit there scathing and writhing and not sleeping at night and creating ulcers and having heart attacks because that's not going to change the world. So you've just become a victim of your own emotions. And that's why that saying is so powerful. You are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim of them. So if you believe that creating anger would get you motivated and start your own political party, for instance, great, do it. If you need anger to do that, that's fine. But you are accepting that you create them. 
but you are not sitting on that runaway horse and being dragged along. You are doing it because it's right for you. You are doing it from your authenticity. You are doing it from your truth, from your honesty and your integrity. That's what I would call your share and your spirituality. Brilliant. Thank you, David. Well, I really hope you found this teaching helpful. I will put other teachings in the show notes that will help deepen your understanding in terms of emotional triggers, understanding your emotions, and also doing the inner child work, which is often involved in managing the emotions and your emotional triggers. If you enjoyed the teaching, please do let us know, share it with someone else who you think may also benefit. If you are interested in working one-to-one with David on any of the subjects we've talked about today, David works by Zoom video call with clients all over the world every week, and I will put a link in the show notes to learn more about David's sessions. And finally, please don't forget, we produce new videos every week on our YouTube channel, so do subscribe because we'd love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.